Uh, afternoon, Sean. Good to see you. Um, I think we've been talking about this for a long time, this busy period of games in December, seven matches to play. I just wonder whether this is a, a benefit for you, really, because no international breaks, no cup competitions. Time for you to work and focus and train more with the team. Is that is that good? Um, well, I think certainly with the international breaks, yeah, but, you know, people often say about us working with the team, but a lot of them are not yeah. here. So, yeah, we, we do get that period. But obviously, with the amount of games, on the other hand, you only get so many days to work in between the games. Yeah. So, And some of that period has to be rest phases, you know, especially when we've got people coming back from injury and the like. So uh, we've been stretched this year, so this period will probably stretch us in the terms of the player usage and the energy of the players. But that's the same for everyone. Talking of players coming back from injury, how are you now in terms of a fully fit squad? Are you nearly there? Well, we're getting there. Uh, AB will get some minutes again today, um, as will Youssef on his journey back to full fitness. Um, there's a game here today, sorry. Yeah. Um, so we, they'll, they'll get some time in that, which is good. Um, AB's in front of Youssef. Youssef is only just his start point, really. Um, but AB's looking really fit, so that's good. Uh, Seamus, at least, is getting back on the grass with us, so probably won't be enough for this weekend, but, but he's, he's showing signs of getting truly fit, if you like, after an up-and-down time with niggly injuries. Um, so, yeah, and other players who are just getting back to full fitness, if you like, full Premier League fitness, so it's, it's coming. So, so we, we don't want to say too much, because no. every time I do, we lose players again, but hopefully they'll stay fit and, and keep getting fitter. So when you say Armando Brogia, is is he anywhere near the, the squad for the weekend? Yeah, well, we'll see how he goes today. We're certainly going to monitor his minutes today, but he's he's done a real lot of background work um, and feeling good. Um, I've spoke to him about possibly being involved, so we'll see. James Garner, Tim Irogbunen? Yeah, they're a little bit behind. Um, Jimmy particularly, he's not there yet, as in on the grass. Tim's just about um, in the, the, the early phases of coming back. But it's, a, it's going to be a while. It's a, a strange sort of injury, so we've got to be a bit careful with that. I know we've got this positive and negative sort of aspect at the moment with one defeat in eight matches, but only five of those being drawn, etc. Um, the, the truth of the matter is you've got to score goals to, to win matches. Are, are you working even harder on that at the moment, doing anything you, differently? You know, you work with them constantly about, you know, goal threats, not just strikers. You know, how can you operate to be a threat from... You know, a lot was made of our set pieces and, and that's still absolutely valid. Um, you know, we want to be a threat from that. From open play, how many different ways can you affect the opposition? We found it tough against a compact defence um, against Brentford. When they went down to 10, we couldn't find them key moments. Mm -hmm. In other games we have and we haven't finished it, the XG and all the rest of it. But at the end of the day, it's the scoreline you're looking for to get that right. You know, and it's um, we've, we've obviously made a considerable difference to the defending stats from the early part of the season, from the first four games. Um, in the last eight, with only conceding four, I think it is. So, you know, there's, there's obvious signs there. And then finding that balance, you know, me and most other managers talk about endlessly, you know, the, the balance between defending well as a team and attacking well as a team. And the final moment, the final moment of the truth is, is obviously the hardest as a manager. You know, you can't kick it in for him. Mm. It must play on players' confidence, though, isn't it? I mean, you've talked in the past about strikers thrive on scoring goals, and Dominic Calvert Loon's gone eight games without a goal. Do you see an effect on him out on the training pitch at all? No, I think I think strikers want to score goals. They're hungry. They should be anyway. Hungry to score goals, but also how they can affect the team in other ways. You know, and Dom's been working hard. Um, Beto's been working hard to adapt and, and get stronger. And his his knowledge of what it is over here. Um, Ab's yet to be seen, and, and Youssef's been very unlucky this season um, with his injury. But you know, a mixture of, of good strikers, I feel, but we've got to get them operating, and that's you know mine, the, the staff, and the players' responsibility to get to get to a point when we are scoring more goals. And defensively sound. I mean, that's that's the solid base of, of any Premier League team, isn't it? Which well, it was a big challenge. We we had to change that. We started the season with with too many giveaway goals, too many soft goals. We have changed that. That's quite obvious. And now, like I say, it's finding the balance between the work ethic of the group, not just the defensive unit, the work ethic of the whole team to, to make sure we're looking after ourselves as regards clean sheets or low goal tally to give us the best operate, uh, best chance sorry, of operating in the attacking third and going scoring and winning games. So what of Manchester United on, on Sunday, Sean? Has, has your task been made a little more difficult because it's the new manager's first home Premier League game in charge? Well, I think everyone talks about a new manager bounce and all the rest of it, so it's, it's, it's more difficult in that kind of way of thinking, but they're still... Good players, you know, they've got good players. Um, a new manager to the Premier League, maybe give a different feel to it. I'm sure he's been working with the players and, and trying to get his thoughts across um, in, in the limited sort of time period they've had with obviously playing last night as well. Did you watch their game last night? I did. 
Have you met uh, the manager before? Do you no, know him at all? No? no, I don't know much of his work, um, other than you know stuff from the TV and stats and facts, but I don't know much of his work. So, Well, wish you luck. Hope Thank you. you. Win there. Thanks, Harry. We'll go to Hey, Sean. Betty here from PLP. Um, talking about Ruben Amarim, of course he's, be, he's made it very clear that he wants to play in that 3-4-3 formation. And while Manchester United are sort of getting used to that, do you think you can use that to your advantage at all? Well, we'll see. I mean, you know, there, there, was, there was signs, clear signs of how he wanted to adapt it with, with different passing thoughts and, you know, the way the team were trying to operate. Um, that's his challenge to get that to happen quickly and it's our challenge to make sure it doesn't, of course, and to go and deliver our performance, you know, because it's important to remember what we do, um, you know, and certainly to be ready for anything. He might change back, I don't know, but he's, um, it does suggest he likes playing three at the back at least and there may be a variance in front of the three. You've talked a little bit about how defensively you've been really solid, really sound. Do you think that you're sort of one adjustment away from things really starting to click? Um, well, we're not been far away. I mean, it's, it's you know we've we've created enough chance in games, the ones that we've drawn to win, um, and we haven't taken the chances. So we're never that far away. You know, defensive side had to be looked at, and I've been pleased with that side of it. Um, and now we've shored that up and, and corrected it. But now finding that, 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 that the, the the fluid play, if you like. Um, or sometimes, as I suggested, it might be a set piece. It doesn't always have to be fluid. There's different ways of scoring goals, but you want you want more goals from open play. And I think this club's been challenging itself for five seasons now, where you know the goal tally's not been that high. So we're trying to correct a lot of that as well. It's not just the individuals now. It's kind of that theme where the team hasn't always scored lots of goals on a regular basis. How do you change that without the goals? Well, coming? You know, you could uh, consistent work, consistent values in how we work. Um, you're not, not overthinking it with the strikers particularly, you know, trying to get them, they call it zone thinking, where you just you play freely, you know, you go into the box, you're not overthinking things, you, you naturally arrive in places. You know, coaching with strikers is a very tricky thing. You know, most, most strikers and top strikers, you know, I was talking to one yesterday with the, the Forest lads, Ian Story Moore, you know, and he was saying there's a, there's a knack as a striker, there's a way of landing in the right place at the right time, and some of the best are like that. So mixing up with training ideas, with movement patterns, but also the striker going into the box free, if you like, to, to sniff a goal, you know, and sometimes make a goal, you know, make a goal themselves. It's not always the team. Some, some of the best strikers, they find a goal by making it themselves. So there's that mixture. Not just strikers either, by the way. No, true. And um, talking about December and this tough run of fixtures, how do you prepare for fixtures like this? Because it doesn't really get much harder for you, does it? Well, I mean, you know, I say all the time, I've been doing it a long time in the Premier League, and you've got to play them all, you know, and everyone's aware of it. And every, every time, every one of these press conferences, there'll be another manager out there at some point where they're saying, oh, you've got this tough, rough, uh, tough run coming, sorry. Dean Pep at the minute, you know, the legendary status that he has, you know, even he's getting questions, what's going, you know, what's the next game look like? So, you know, that's the way it is. And, and the fixtures have, have given us this run. And yes, it's a tough run, but... Every, everything's tough in the Premier League. We've shown before that we can take these teams on, uh, teams on sorry, and that's what we've got to do again. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Petty. We'll go to Julia. I'm going to stick with strikers just for a minute. Um, in the, the previous game, you brought Beto on, and, and before it had been sort of Dom came off, Beto came on, you played two up top. Is that something in your search for goals that now you're thinking... I'm going to play them together, and can they play together to get those goals? We're just finding different ways of operating. I mean, the strikers we have here, I don't think any of them have played regularly in a two. And it is different, you know, understanding the combination of two strikers. So that takes time to adapt to, both on the training pitch and possibly in games. But sometimes, you know, the, the way strikers work, they can find goals out of nothing. And, you know, a, a, a tough patch of not scoring suddenly becomes a purple patch. So... Trying to operate in different ways, to be honest, and affect games in different ways to try and break down the opposition and, and score more goals. You said before that you know it's been maybe an issue that's gone on prior to your time here about trying to get goals. I think you've said to me before it's an anomaly when players, strikers, don't score sort of the high end number of goals. At which point do you think maybe I have to look at this completely different? Do you do you look at maybe bringing in a net like a I don't know is there a striker specialist or something? Because I just think if it's no, gone I on that long before. Well, as I said, you know, I was with some very good players. John Robertson yesterday, legendary figure that he is. Ian Stormy, uh, Story Moore, sorry, Gary Bertles. I was with them yesterday and I was chatting to them about it. You know, and they're saying it's not, I don't remember striker coaches when they were kids. I just remember learning on the on the job and learning where to be in the right place at the right time. And like I say, that, that kind of, it's like an instinct for the top strikers. So you develop the running patterns, you develop where to go, you develop where the team can put the ball. But it's the, the final moment of truth is often down to the strikers. You know, I said recently, you know, most 
Most, I said it last week, in fact, most, most clubs buy strikers. It's very rare you just develop them. Some come out of the system now and again. So we're trying to develop strikers or develop the ones we've got to be even better strikers because I think they are good strikers. But developing that, that moment of truth is, is very difficult to just coach it because, you know, if everyone thought it was that easy, they'd all have striker coaches. And um, given that there, there were no goals scored in the month and obviously the position that you're in right now, your overview of this season, are you worried right now it is a relegation battle again? No, it's no, nothing more than I thought it was going to be in the sense I didn't go into this season. You know, we've been selling players every season, so you're going to bring new players in. They've got to adapt. They've got to hit the ground running. We've been trying to make them do that. It was under no illusion that we'd just be romping up the table. You know, the, the, the team hasn't, the club hasn't done that for a number of seasons. So there's no reason why it's just, you know, like a, a, a magic click of the fingers and it all falls together. On the other hand, when you look at the games, I mean, you know, there's, we still had them head scratches where you're amazed we didn't certainly get a point, if not three, out of games. And if, if they were, I know it's easy to say now, but, you know, we had enough chance against Southampton to win that game, enough chance at Brentford to win that game. If you win them games, it all looks different. So we've got to remember we're not miles away from where we need to be as regards the performances, but now it's about adding in the killer, the killer moments, you know, and that's the biggest uh, step that we've got to take now. Um, but no, in the bigger picture, I was certainly hoping for better than we're doing at the minute, league-wise, league, league wise, um, and some of the performances, and I certainly wasn't expecting to get off to the, the beginning of the season that we did. On the other hand, there was not no illusion that it's just going to be an easy season, because it's not. You know, that was, that was from the off. We knew that from the last couple of seasons. You can't change things overnight, not unless you've got lots and lots and lots and lots of money. And they've even tried that here, and that didn't work that well. So it's not that easy. Um, there are some reports today around Nathan Patterson potentially going on loan in January. Who's reporting? Who? It's Tell me online who? saying them. that there are... Oh, I can get my phone oh, okay. out if you want. I can't okay. remember the exact... But there That's are the some writer. claims. That's I think it's writer. coming from north of the border saying that Rangers would be potentially okay. a destination for him. So that's where it's come from. Um, I just wondered if... Is that an option for him to go out on loan? Because and, and why isn't he able to... I know he's having injuries, obviously, but he's back in training. Why isn't he able to get into Yeah, we'll, that? we'll decide what happens with the players here, but he's, he's on a journey back from a really serious injury and he continues to be on that journey, but he's going along well. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. Any further questions in the open section? Carl, we'll go to you. Hey, Sean. Sure. Um, I know there's always pressure to get points from every game, but because of this month coming up, do you, is, there, is there an extra sort of scrutiny or extra concentration on eking out as much as you possibly can from this? No, no, no. We've, we've got to take on every game. You know, we've, you know, just because it's a piece of paper that's a tough run, which it is, it doesn't mean that that's the outcome. So we have to make sure we're clear-minded on that and remind the players of the good work that we're doing and the stuff we want to do and some of the big results I had in the past that makes you, you know, remind them of the fact that we're certainly capable of being competitive against anyone. Is that something you would do then, remind them of the results they've got against some of the big No, not always. I just mean it's just part of it. You know, there's different ways of operating to, to make sure there's, well, hopefully to try and reinforce they're in the right um, mind state to go and take on these teams. Thanks, Carl. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, Sean. Just in terms of Patterson, he plays on Monday night. How does he get on? And can you explain the red cards? What happens when people? Yeah, I wasn't at the game. Uh, well, I only went down to the game, but I think it was a, a kick in the ball away incident. So therefore, he got a red card for a second, second yellow. I think. But in terms of performance, how did he? How did he do? Yeah, fine. Um, there's 12 games left at Goodson Park. I understand you're away from home this weekend, but you've got two home games coming up. And obviously, fans want to give the stadium a good send off. There's only been one win so far. Is it? A balance of having a happy medium between giving the fans entertainment a good setback and trying to deliver results and making sure. No, there, there's no the balance. Setback. The balance is clear for me. Win games. You know, I can't get involved in the. You know, I've said many times that the fans wanted the truth. I tell them the truth. Just because it's the last season in a, in a marvelous old stadium, which I've grown to love myself, but it doesn't make them all better players. It doesn't make everything better. You know, we're trying. We're trying to give them everything they can or everything we can. But it's not that easy. You've still got the opposition out there. They're not bothered about a stadium and a good send-off for the stadium. Are they? they just want to win games. So I've never lost sight of that. If we can give the fans a great send-off to the stadium, we'll be trying our hardest to do so like we have been doing. But it's not that easy. It doesn't mean because you're just in a great old stadium and saying goodbye to it, everyone, all the players have suddenly become double the players they were. Just in terms of the squads, you obviously lost Amazon now in the summer. We brought in 
uh, in Dai and Lindstrom, do you feel like you are at the minute getting the best out of this squad, or is it? Is well, it we're working hard to. You know, we're trying to mix and match the squad, trying to find better ways of operating, to score more goals, trying to win games. Of course, that's a given. Um, so yeah, we're just we're just trying to mould the team into the best possible unit to go and win games. And you know, like I said, we we brought in four players who've never played in the Premier League, so it's, it's not it's not a given to just expect them to hit the ground. They know everything about it. They can deliver performances and glue together as a side. You know, it's not that easy. So it's about the development of the side, and that's what I've been saying recently. And, and we're trying to fast track that development as quick as we possibly can, obviously. And just in terms of formation, obviously some fans say maybe trying a, a wing back system. Do you think you all honestly do you think you have the players to? Do no, that? it's a it's a it's a fine line. We've just. I've only conceded four goals in the last uh, eight games. So then you go, right, OK, well, where, where are you taking it away from to add to? You know, that's that's the truth of it. You know, we've got to be careful about how many changes we make, especially when part of the team is operating in such a, a strong fashion. You know, to only concede four in eight games is, is very, very low, very strong, that is. So, you know, it's that risk or reward of balancing out. Like I said, you've got to find both ends of the pitch. We've corrected one. We've got to now establish ourselves better in the attacking third. It's not always down to shapes down to someone putting it in the net and we've had plenty of chances to do that and we haven't done it so that's what we've got to correct without beyond shapes but we certainly think about the shapes yeah and we work with the players and look at different variations um, both before games and during games. Thanks,